welcome to Mischief 4 Gaming. I'm John, and this is Star Trek Attack Wing. I know it's been a while since my last video, but let's just jump straight back into things with a scenario based on one of the very best Star Trek shows, Deep Space Nine. This mission follows the recently demoted Gold Ducat, taking matters into his own hands, where he steals a Klingon bird of prey and begins his own war against the Klingons. In the scenario, Descartes is accompanied by a Cardassian Keldon class as they hunt Klingon ships. Their targets are a Vulture and a Katinga class, with more on their way. The Cardassian fleet consists of Ducat's Bird of Prey, a unique variant that grants the ship extra actions at the beginning of each combat phase. He is of course commanded by Gold Ducat himself. He is using the interrogation skill, hopefully to disable any Klingon crew members that get too close. The ship is backed by the Obsidian Order, adding further tokens. Lastly, the ship is equipped with a Torpedo Fusillade, a holdover from the ship's Klingon origins. The cutter is supported by the CUV Briank, a Keldon class cruiser. It is captained by Golovec and has Descartes' second in command, Goldemar, on board, improving not only Avec's skill, but it can also support Descartes. The, the Briank comes with a phase disruptor array and the Uridium Alloy, making the ship surprisingly dangerous for its size. The Klingon targets for this mission are generic ships. First up is the IKS Bamoth, a Katinga class ship. The captain uses the rules for Koloff and is using the worthy opponent talent. The other ship is the IKS Varnak, a Vulture class whose captain is using the rules for Kor. The ship has a Dahar Master and a Klingon Beck on board. The mission comes from a Cardassian faction pack and is called the Simpler Times. The mission is straightforward. The Cardassians have to destroy two or more Klingon ships and get Descartes' Bird of Prey off the Klingon board edge, presumably to make life difficult for some other people. The Klingons have to destroy Descartes' ship. The mission has two notable special rules. Firstly, all ships pursue the Cardassian means that whenever a Klingon ship is destroyed, a copy of it spawns on the Klingon board edge at the beginning of the next turn. Second, fly it like you stole it, soups up Descartes' Bird of Prey's inherent ability. At the beginning of the combat phase, in addition to gaining a token from the ship, this rule allows Descartes to perform a free action, or perform a speed 1 or 2 move. This will make Descartes' ship a slippery foe, who will most likely always have the right token for the job. With that out of the way, both teams are deployed, and the game begins. In Star Trek Attack Wing, the movement phase begins with the captain with the lowest captain skill, which, even after Goldemar's bonus, is Gullivec. The goal keeps things simple, as the ship moves a full speed forward. and afterwards activates battle stations. Next up is Koloff, followed by Kor, who both move at full speed forward and activate their cloaks. Finally, Gold Descartes follows suit, moving at full speed forward and cloaking. Again, in Star Trek Attack Wing, the combat phase goes in the opposite order to the movement phase. So we start with the captain with the highest captain skill, which in this game will be Gold Descartes, who uses both his ship's ability and the mission special rule to activate battle stations and to perform a one speed left bank. This doesn't stop Kor, however, who takes a long-range shot at the cut. A hit and a critical are scored.
However, Ducat scores free of aids, not even needing to use his battle stations. With Nova shooting, the brief turn one comes to an end. The cut has been fired at, but he is far away and cloaked, which proves to be solid defence for now. Turn two begins with Golovek making a two speed left bank. and uses the scan action to boost their attack for this turn. Koloff makes a 1 speed right bank, turning towards Ducat. And goes on battle stations. Core, however, crawls forward very slowly. And this turn I actually remember that the Daha Master lets Core cloak for free. So Core recloaks and scans. Ducat performs a two speed right turn. and scans. But before shooting can begin, Ducat performs a sensor echo action, a move representing how hard it is to track cloak ships. Knowing that he's about to be fired upon, Ducat also evades before using his ship's torpedo fusillade to fire at both Klingon ships. First is the attack against Kor. Kor is only able to negate a hit, taking a damage and a critical. Which is Jostled Navigator. This means his ship will take further damage if it gets too close to other ships. Next is the attack against Koloff. Four hits are scored, but after using their battle stations, Koloff negates all the hits. Descartes' Obsidian Order talent means that he now also gains a battle stations token. Next up, Kor fires up Gold Ducat. However, the Bird of Prey evades the shots. Koloff fires at the Gold too. But thanks to the newly gained Battle Stations token, Descartes negates the attack. Lastly, the Keldon fires on Core. However, the attack doesn't do anything. Turn 2 ends in a bitter knife fight with the Klingons coming off worse for wear, but no casualties yet. Turn 3 begins with Gold Descartes using his interrogation talent to render Kor's Klingon back useless for the next few turns. Golovek moves at a 2 speed forward. And uses evasive actions. Koloff charges forward and recloaks.
core moves much slower, but also recloaks. Ducat performs a stressful move, a free stern. Rotate 180 degrees and go on auxiliary power, preventing the ship from performing any extra actions until a simple move is performed. This means that this turn's combat phase actually starts with some combat, as Gold Ducat fires at core. Paul rolls abysmally and takes two damage, leaving the ship on just one hull point. And that is a wrap on turn three, as no other ship is in position to fire. The cut's move is keeping the Klingons on their toes, as they have yet to damage their primary target. Turn four starts off with Golovek making a two speed right turn. and goes on evasive actions. Koloff makes the same moves. Two speed right turn and evade. Core makes the same move as Descartes last turn, flipping the Gatinga around, ready to fight. Descartes makes a simple two speed forward, going off of auxiliary power and allowing him to make a scan action. To begin the combat phase, Ducat also goes on evasive actions and makes a one speed right bank before opening fire on Koloff. Ducat scores three hits, but uses Ducat's captain ability to spend both his evade and scan token to change the battle station's results into two further hits. Koloff only rolls one evade, but uses their evade token to negate two hits. The Katinga takes one damage and two criticals. The first is munitions failure, but it's the other one, a direct hit, which does an extra point of damage. That's four damage, which takes out the IKS Bamoth. The Kardashians only need to destroy one more Klingon ship. With no other ships in position, the turn ends. Goddard picked on the older and weaker Katinga class ship and destroying it in one shot. The Klingons are looking like they're in trouble. Turn 5 starts off with a new Katinga class spawning, the IKS Mokbara. They are equipped exactly the same as the IKS Bimoff and their captain is the same as Koloff. Gullivec is in position to get the jump on the new arrival, moving a one speed forward and getting a target lock on the Mokbara. The new Koloff tries to get out of there by moving a full speed forward and cloaking. Core performs a one speed left bank. The Daiha Master letting him gain a target lock on Descartes while the ship makes a sensor echo action.
Lastly, the cart makes a two-speed right turn and cloaks. To start the combat phase, the cart evades and also makes a sensor echo move. This doesn't stop Kor from firing on him. Who scores four hits after using their target lock. Dukart is able to negate all but the critical hit. taking a weapons malfunction. The Cut's Bird of Prey rolls less dice on the attack until the damage is repaired. The new Koloff isn't in a position to fire, however the Keldon class has a 180 degree front fire arc, unlike the other ships 90 degree, and is able to fire. Avec opens fire on the Katinga, scoring 3 hits. Avec uses the ship's phase disruptor array, to score two more hits, and then uses the Iridium Alloy to turn two of those hits into a critical. The Katinga manages to evade two hits, but still takes three critical hits. A console fire. and Stunned Helmsman would be bad enough, but bad luck for the Klingons as another direct hit is scored, doing enough damage to destroy the newly arrived IKS Mokbara. Turn 5 comes to an end with the Cardassians having completed their primary objective, but Dukat's ship has taken damage and the Bird of Prey is a very fragile ship. Turn 6 begins with another Katinga spawning. The IKS Kamak Gullivec makes a two speed right turn going on battle stations. Koloff the third moves a four speed forward and cloaks. Hopefully they'll live longer than his predecessor. Core moves a free speed forward, the Daha Master letting the ship cloak while Core scans. Lastly, Gold Cart makes a free speed right bank and then goes on a face of actions. In the combat phase, Goldacup moves a two speed forward and goes on battle stations. Core fires on the cut, scoring two hits. However, the Bird of Prey scores enough evades after using the battle stations token, that the ship is unharmed. With that being the only attack available this turn, victory is all but certain for the Cardassians, as the cart narrowly avoided being in the Katinga's fire arc. Turn 7 promises to be the last turn, as the Keldon
Katinga. Forcher, make their moves. But they needn't bother, as to cut speeds towards the Klingon board edge. And uses their free move from the mission special rule to cross the board edge before anyone can fire at him. The Cardassians win. And that was a game of Star Trek Attack Wing. I'm looking forward to tackling the other missions, including the other faction packs. As in the show, Goldcar absolutely ruined the Klingons on his rampage. I'm also a fan of the Cardassians, so this mission was extra fun for me. Okay, so where have I been for months? Short story, uh, I was working a full-time job, and I ran out of time to work on this channel. But things have changed. Uh, the long story, read about it over on my relatively new website, mischiefwargaming.com. It will be the place to keep up to date with what's happening with the channel. There will be blog posts, like the one detailing my absence. There's a feed to my Instagram over there. That's where to keep up to date with upcoming videos. There will be occasional pictures of a cat. At least all my other videos, and more content as the channel expands. So with a bit of luck, I should be posting regularly and more frequently than before. So to keep up to date, like this video, subscribe, check out mischiefwargaming.com, and until next time, thank you very much for watching, take care.